Good evening and welcome to the December 1st regular City Commission meeting of the City of Ormond Beach. It is 7 p.m. and we are in the Commission Chambers. I hope you felt welcomed this evening by uh, our Public Works Director Sean Finley and our Deputy Public Works Director Kevin Gray. They were your greeters as you came in this evening. Um, I'd like to introduce the folks who are sitting up in front of you tonight. Uh, to my right, your left, Recording Secretary Cassidy Ritz, our City Attorney Randy Hayes. Next to Randy is Commissioner from Zone 1, Dwight Selby. Next to Commissioner Selby is our Zone 2 Commissioner, Troy Kent. Good evening. And to my left and your right, uh, Deputy Mayor and Zone 3 Commissioner, Susan Persis and our Zone 4 Commissioner, Rob Littleton. <laughs> Give me a hard time about that. Uh, down in front this evening uh, is Joyce Shanahan, our City Manager, Assistant City Manager, Claire Whitley. We have two Chiefs tonight, uh, one for police and one for fire that have joined us and they're over again to my left to your far right. And for those of you listening online, I'm Bill Partington, Mayor of the City of Ormond Beach. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce to you uh, Pastor Floyd Narcisse. He is the uh, new pastor at the historic New Bethel AME Church, and we want to welcome him. That's a beautiful, well-loved church in our community, and we want to welcome him to Ormond Beach, and he's going to provide our invocation. If you'll make sure that your uh, cell phones are silenced, and please rise for the invocation, followed by the pledge. Thank you, Mayor. Let us all look to the Lord in prayer this evening. Lord, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for allowing us to be here today. Lord, as we come this evening, God, we ask that you will touch our mayor, our commissioners, our chiefs. Lord, touch the people of Ormond Beach right now, Lord, because we come this Monday, this Tuesday, Lord, to discuss the business of your city. But, Lord, we can't do nothing unless you send us. So, Lord, anything that's not of you, we ask that you would leave it where it needs to be, God, and have your way. Let your light so shine on this city, shine on this meeting. Let your people of God understand that we can't do nothing unless you do your, what you're supposed to do, and that's to be God. Forgive us for our sins that we have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty. Have your way on this meeting, God. And, Lord, anything that's not of you, leave it at the door, God. For we want to be successful in this meeting. We want to discuss the business of your, of your city. But help us to do it out of love, L-O-V. Help us to love our neighbor. Help us to love our mayor. Help us to love our commissioner. Help us to love one another so we can do what you have called us to do. Be the city like no other city. Help us to be that city that people say, that's the city I want to be a part of. That's the city I want to work in. That's the city I want to grow. Help us to do all that together in unity and love. This we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Let everyone who has breath say amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We are uh, lucky and honored tonight to be able to present a proclamation. I think we had tried to do this back maybe in March or February, and of course COVID hit, and we have had some scheduling difficulties ever since that time, and everybody's been uh, super busy. But for our city to uh, be able to honor a former mayor whom we all whom we all know and uh, have worked with is just, it's a wonderful opportunity. So at this time, I'd like uh, for Volusia County Chairman and former Ormond Beach Mayor Ed Kelly to come forward. We're gonna bring Mary Margaret up at the end for pictures, but if you would just face the audience, and we're gonna do this in a socially distanced manner, <clears throat> but I'm gonna read this proclamation. Our staff knows you so well 
and they love you and respect you. They did such a nice job on this proclamation. When I read it, I was, they always do a great job, but I was really blown away. So I'm excited to uh, read and present this proclamation to you. Whereas Edward Ed Kelly is a graduate of Belmont College in Nashville, Tennessee, and a former sales distributor and president of European operations for Hawaiian Tropic. Ed Kelly and his wife, Mary Margaret, moved to Ormond Beach in 1980 and raised two children, Brian and Catherine, in our charming city. And whereas in 1994, Ed Kelly was elected to the Ormond Beach City Commission to represent Zone 3 and served through 1997, through a special election in 2005, he rejoined the commission as Zone 3 Commissioner until 2010 when he was elected to the position of mayor. He served the city of Ormond Beach as mayor until 2016 before being elected to serve as Volusia County Chair. He also has served his community in many organizations over the years, including as chair of the Volusia Water Alliance and the Water Authority of Volusia, chair and executive board member of the Volusia Council of Governments, and as an executive board member of the River to Sea Transportation Planning Organization. After his many years of public service, Ed Kelly will end his term on the Volusia County Council in December of 2020. And he can tell you the days, hours, and minutes, but we won't, we won't get into that. Whereas Ed Kelly's proudest accomplishments while on the Ormond Beach City Commission involved establishing responsible fiscal policies that are still in effect today, such as a dedicated millage for roads, renewal and replacement funds, pension reform, contracting services for solid waste, and setting aside funds for stormwater projects. He learned from fellow ma former mayor David Hood that you could disagree without being disagreeable and let that motto influence his relationships with those he worked with. The commissioners who served with him lauded his integrity and character. And whereas Ed Kelly believes that local public service is all about love of your community and leaving something better than you found it, through his decades of service, he has strived to make Ormond Beach a great place to live, work, and play for all citizens. Ed Kelly always looked for ways to govern smarter, more efficiently, and more fiscally responsible. He will continue his work in that regard as a member of the Local Government Efficiency Task Force a position that he was recently appointed to by Governor Ron DeSantis. And whereas Ed Kelly is a dedicated husband and father, he has decided to retire to spend more time with his family. He has shared his heart, humor, guidance, and sometimes even his baking skills with many members of the Ormond <laughs> Beach community. Through his years of service, Ed Kelly touched many lives, including those he served with, the veterans he recognized and honored, and the constituents he represented. He took the city of Ormond Beach to new heights and left lasting impacts on his local community. Now, therefore, I, Bill Partington, mayor of the city of Ormond Beach, do hereby proclaim December 1st, 2020, as a day to recognize Ed Kelly and encourage all residents to join me in wishing him the best in his well-deserved retirement and in thanking him for his many years of dedicated leadership and service to Volusia County and the city of Ormond Beach. Congratulations, sir. We also, we also have, and we want to get a picture of you and Mary Margaret as we present this to you, uh, a flag that was flown over the United States Capitol, and it's been framed for display purposes. and. We just want you to know how much we respect and love you and appreciate all you've done for our city and for Volusia County as well. So congratulations and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're gonna come in for a picture. I just want to say one thing. Um, <laughs> get through it. If I didn't do anything else, 
I got Volusia County Council to recognize the 16 cities of Volusia County. And we all are part of Volusia County. We even got them to join the League of Cities. That was a goal of mine that was one of the five priorities that I had, and that was to make sure that the county continued to work with us instead of at us or against us. And I think that has proved that uh, doing that, we've become much better at working together, sharing thoughts and ideas, and that was uh, huge. Amen. So huge. thank you all for this tonight. And uh, I can't be very funny now, though, so anyway. <laughs> Enjoy. Everyone have a Merry Christmas. Well deserved. Yay. All right. And now we will uh, move on to audience remarks, and I'll recognize Pastor Narcisse again from the historic New Bethel AM AME Church. Good evening. My name is the Reverend Floyd Lindsay Narcisse. I'm the pastor of Historic New Bethel here in Ormond Beach, Florida. I just want to come here not to complain, but I want to commend the police chief and the police department. Um, as you all know, there's situations occurring across these United States of America, dealing with Black Lives Matter, dealing with non unarmed black men being killed for all kinds of reasons. And every Wednesday since I've been here, there's been one side, this side, and that side. I want to commend the police force publicly to upholding the law of doing things that some of us may not agree with. But I want to just commend, come here today and say, I thank God for the police chief that we have here in Ormond Beach. I thank God for the police department and for the police officers who put their lives on the line. That's all I want to say. Thank you for the city. Thank you for the police chief who's have an open door policy to the community. And I want you all to know as an African American pastor in the city, I support, we support police officers. And it's good to be in a city that supports the people and that does the right thing for the right cause. And that's all I want to say. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next is Ike Leary. That'd be great. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, commissioners, good evening. Good evening. Uh, and all of staff. Uh, I just got a couple of things. Uh, one was last Saturday, we, we, uh, uh, we had our shop a small Saturday. It was great. My kudos out to uh, Julia and, and Becky from Ormond Main Street. Great job, great job. Uh, next thing, uh, we got the plans for the new bait shop. Uh, it's going to be nice. Woman's going to be proud of it. Uh, I'm meeting tomorrow again with the engineer and the architect, and uh, uh, hopefully we're going to get the plans finalized and get this going. Uh, that's all I got. I appreciate everything. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador, and um, good to see you well. Uh, next is Jim Schultz. Jim Schultz, 117 Harvard Drive. Uh, just a little reminder, something that I have a hard time getting out of my head. Uh, the Floridation uh, Toxic Substance Control Act uh, litigation uh, in the Ninth District Cir Circuit Court in San Francisco uh, is meeting again on the 10th of this month. So it's a little bit more than a week away. I've already had uh, two prior meetings. The last meeting was a real quick one. They only sat down for a while and tried to hash out uh, potential agreements between the EPA and the plaintiffs um, and uh, 
the judge made it known to them that they should be looking at the best data, which was the most current data that was put into amendments. And also what they did was they, uh, it's real important you have standing in a court. And for the specific issue, uh, the plaintiffs added nine women that were either pregnant or working towards that goal so that they could be the ones representing standing as far as having fetuses or babies that would be in the at-risk group that we're supposed to be protecting from. Uh, that sounded real good. Uh, actually, there have been a, three state courts uh, that fluoridation is lost, but the uh, federal government said uh, you have no access to this. You don't have standing because it's a federal issue uh, regulated as a contaminant. Uh, strangely, though, uh, the EPA union headquarters out of Washington, D.C., also sued the federal court to halt fluoridation. They were found not to have standing. They seemed to have excellent knowledge of a risk that they thought should deserve standing, but they were told as experts, the most prestigious experts in the field, that they had to go shut up and sit down and not go to court. So it's nice to see that happening. Uh, sort of as an amusing thing, if you can consider some things amusing, the FDA in dealing with minuscule amounts of fluoride for infants says that you have to be a doctor and write a script for a child to get a fourth of a milligram. In other words, one third of what's in an average quart of water, but that's only if it's a pharmaceutical grade and not delivered by a tanker truck. Thank you, Jim. <clears throat> And we'll move to the approval of the minutes. The minutes have been sent to the commission for review and posted to the city's website. Uh, these are the minutes from the city commission meeting of November 4th, 2020, and also the minutes from the city commission meeting of November 17th, 2020. Any additions, deletions, or corrections? Take a motion to approve. I move approval of the minutes from the meeting of, on November 4th and November 17th. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Oppose like sign, and we'll show those passing unanimously. And uh, now we move to the consent agenda. Does any member of the commission wish to pull any item off of the consent agenda? Mayor, Mayor I'd like to uh, pull item N, as in Nancy. Got it. Move approval of the consent agenda, absent item N. Second, Second the motion. Consent agenda, absent item N. Colby, if you would, please call the vote. Commissioner Selby. Yes. Commissioner Kent. Yes. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Littleton. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. And seven N. Resolution number 2020-187, a resolution accepting a proposal from A.M. Weigel Construction, Inc. to provide construction management services regarding the McDonald House restoration east and west elevations project authorizing the execution of a work authorization thereto and setting forth an effective date this is resolution number 2020-187 read by title only thank you colby uh just need a motion and a second for discussion i move approval of resolution number 2020-187 i second the motion and commissioner selby yeah, I just uh, I, I just wanted to, us to discuss this only, be, and I've had uh, conversations uh, today with um, the city manager, and also with uh, public works director uh, Finley. And uh, but I just I thought the I thought the write up was a little confusing. I wasn't exactly you know wasn't completely clear to me, and so I just kind of wanted uh, staff to explain exactly what we're doing uh, with this uh, first phase on the uh, McDonald House. go to Sean Finley, Public Works Director. Yes, sir. Um, just to kind of follow up what we're doing with this one, we had put in for a proposal. We, we've obviously, we've spent a lot of time with McDonald House. 
we did a project about two years ago where we took that one wall of the tower, um, did it kind of as a pilot study to give us an idea of what we could do to realistically expect what was going to be entailed to do this project. Um, with that, we saw that it was not just the cladding, not just the siding. There's some structural work behind it that would need to be done. So we used that as our, as our basis of our estimate. Have a pretty, what we think is a pretty firm estimate. You know, I'm hoping it's on the conservative side. I'm hoping that we can do it for less than what we're doing. We went back, we revisited with A.M. Weigel, who did that first work. They are one of our continuing contracts, um, construction managers at risk. We've done a, a number of projects with this. We trust them very thoroughly. Um, when we looked at it, we, we, we took a very hard look at it and, and what it would entail, and we decided to take half of it in, in one chunk. That way we're not taking too much, biting off too much. As, as we've seen with, with what's gone on here in Main Street, <clears throat> re building renovation, historic renovation it, it is a very – um, precise type thing and, and, and when you do it you uncover you, you pull back those layers of the onion and you, do, you may find things you don't know we didn't want to get further ahead of ourselves than we were prepared to do when doing that what we'd like to do is we'd like to take the, the, the two walls that we're proposing the east wall which is the one that's adjacent to the gas lamp shops and the west wall which is the one that faces the parking lot coming in we think that those are the two that are in most need for for being renovated at this time proceed with those and take it step by step Looking at it from progress, taking it week, week at a time, two weeks at a time, we'd like to come back to you all with, with updates as we're going through this before we get to, 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 to prove it. That way we can let you know, hey, we're staying on schedule we're, or we're, we're slipping behind, we're, we're, are, are, we're going a little bit over budget, or hey, it's not as bad as we thought it was. We're, we're going to be under budget, and we think that we'll be able to go to those next two sides. So before we get too far along, we want to make sure that, that we're doing everything we can do to take a very prudent approach to this and know that we're, we're, we're doing a good job for, for the citizens of Orange Beach and for the building itself. So, so and, and Mr. Finley, is it a, is it a cost plus uh, the, the, arrangement with Weigel or is it a gross maximum it's, it's price? A it's a time and materials type contract you know? where they've got a management fee on it. So, so what they, they're getting paid for what they do essentially. And, and it's not a lump sum that, that we're going to have an expectation of doing a, a thousand square feet and it ends up being 1200 square feet and they hit us with a change order we're doing it as a as a time and materials there's an estimated we've done takeoffs they've done takeoffs so we think that we know what it's going to be but obviously if, if the, the siding itself is going to be pretty precise it's the structural that's that's a little bit of that uns, unsure thing and we won't really know ever, all the structural until we get some of that <clears throat> siding off we've got it budgeted to do all of the structural here and, and, and I think that that's more than what we're going to need, but we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. So I think that by taking this approach where we're taking it one step at a time, two walls at a time, that we're not getting too far ahead of things and we're not letting ourselves get in trouble. And it's $448,650 is the... That, 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 that's, our, that's our estimated. That's your estimate. Yes. And who, and so that, and so that's where does the money come from that? What the are the, the money, sources of money? There's three sources of money for this. Um, We've got ECHO funds. We were successful in receiving an ECHO grant. So that ECHO grant, what we did was we maximized the money available from Lucia County from the ECHO. 400000 is the most they will give to a project. That's what we got awarded from, from, from Volusia County for this ECHO. The Historical Society also pledged $100,000 that they raised through, through, their, through their members and through their fundraising. The balance of, that would be for, the, balance of the project would be from, from the City of Ormond Beach. Very good. Thank you. No problem. City Manager Shanahan. Um, also, it, it was difficult to mobilize the entire building at one time. So we didn't want to get too far ahead of ourselves for that purpose as well. So they decided to attack that west wall next to the shops and then the, the east wall and then the west wall. But we didn't want to have the whole building torn apart all at the same time. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? Colby, please call the vote. Commissioner Kent. Yes. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Littleton. Yes. Commissioner Selby. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. And now would be the appropriate time if any commissioner wishes to comment on any of the consent agenda items. Commissioner Persis. Yes, I'd like to comment on um, item G. Um, you know, all these meetings when we see that the city's purchasing you know, trucks or cars for the firemen or for the police officers. And, um, you know, you look at those pictures and they're all like 20 years old, these, these vehicles that they've been using. So I just think um, I, I love seeing that they're getting new, you know, we're getting new trucks for whatever area it is. But this one is, you know, 
was a great deal with almost like $7,600 under the budget that it was re required for. So I think it was a great job that the city saving some money there and, um, you know, getting new vehicles that we really do need. Just wanted to say that. Thank you. Any other comments? Commissioner Selby. Uh, to that uh, point also, item H, uh, three new police cruisers, uh, $90,000 for the for the vehicles themselves, and then it costs another, just for taxpayers' benefit, costs another approximately $15,000 for light bars and radios and all the other police-specific stuff. So the uh, cruiser ends up costing about $45,000 all in, 30 for the car and then 15 for the other stuff. So it's not cheap, but it's, you know, good stuff. And one of the vehicles that I think we're, we're decommissioning is a early 2000. So this is like a 17 or 18 year old car. So um, to, to Commissioner, to Vice Mayor uh, Persis's uh, point, um, this city runs the wheels off of vehicles before it, uh, before it trades them in, decommissions them. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much, Joyce, to you and, this, and the staff. Thank you, Commissioner. Anyone else? not we will move to public hearings and I will open the public hearings and we'll start with 8a ordinance number 2020-50 an ordinance amending paragraph C official zoning map of section 2-01 established of article 1 establishment of zoning districts and official zoning map of chapter 2 district and general regulations of the city of Ormond Beach land development code by amending the official zoning map to rezone certain real property totaling 18.47 plus acres located at 350 Clyde Morris Boulevard from Volusia County B2 neighborhood commercial and R2 urban single family residential to Ormond Beach B10 suburban Boulevard authorizing revision of official zoning map, repealing all inconsistent ordinances or parts thereof, and setting forth an effective date. This is the second reading of ordinance number 2020-50, read by title only. Thank you, Colby. I don't have any cards. Move for approval, ordinance number 2020-50. Second. Any discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Littleton. Yes. Commissioner Selby. Yes. Commissioner Kent. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. And 8B. Ordinance number 2020-51, an ordinance am amending paragraph C, official zoning map of section 2-01, establishment of zoning districts and official zoning map of article one, establishment of zoning districts and official zoning map of chapter two, district and general regulations of the city of Ormond Beach land development code. By amending the official zoning map to rezone a certain parcel of real property totaling approximately 6.06 .06 acres, located at 1020 to 1044 North US Highway 1, from B8 commercial with a planned business development overlay to planned business development, authorizing revision of official zoning map, repealing all inconsistent ordinances or parts thereof, and setting forth an effective date. This is the second reading of ordinance number 2020-51, read by title only. Thank you, Colby. Uh, the applicant, Kim Buck, is available for questions if needed, and uh, other than that, I don't have any cards. I move for approval. Second. Any discussion? Great. Colby, please call the vote. Commissioner Littleton. Yes. Commissioner Selby. Yes. Commissioner Kent. Yes. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. 8C. Ordinance number 2020-52, an ordinance authorizing the execution and issuance of a third amended development order for a planned business development known as US-1 Business Park authorizing the construction of two buildings consisting of 7,810 and 6,600 square feet, along with associated site improvements, to be located at 1020 to 1044 North US Highway 1, authorizing mini warehouses, warehouse storage, and the indoor warehouse storage of recreational vehicles and boats, establishing conditions and expirations of approval and setting forth an effective date. This is the second reading of ordinance number 2020-52, read by title only. Thank you. I don't have any cards. Move approval of ordinance number 2020-52. I second the motion. Any discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Selby. Yes. Commissioner Kent. Yes. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Littleton. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. 8D. Ordinance number 2020-53, an ordinance amending paragraph C, official zoning map of section 2-01 established of article one, establishment of zoning districts and official zoning map of chapter two, district and general regulations of the city of Ormond Beach land development code. By amending the official zoning map to rezone a certain parcel of real property, 
totaling approximately 8.2 acres, located southeast of 1255 North U.S. Highway 1, a portion of Volusia County parcel number 4206-00-00-0020 from R5 multifamily medium density to PRD plan residential development, authorizing revision of official zoning map, repealing all inconsistent ordinances or parts thereof, and setting forth an effective date. This is the first reading of ordinance number 2020-53, read by title only. Thank you, Colby. And I'll ask uh, Planning Director Stephen Spraker to walk us through D, E, and F, if you can take them all at one time. Good evening, uh, Steve Spraker, Planning Director. So this is an application for Armoring Ground that has three components. Uh, the three components are a zoning map amendment from R5 to plan residential development. So that provides the overall framework for the project. The next item is the issuance of the development order to allow 60 multifamily townhomes and site-specific plans for stormwater utility, landscaping, fencing, and building architecture. So that is the actual development plan for the project. And the last zoning action is a preliminary plat. This is the subdivision of land for both the industrial parcel and the multifamily townhome. Within your packet are uh, several correspondence that we've received. So everything we, we've gotten on this project, we provided to the city commission. So all the information up here from Mr. Uh, Attorney Bosch, the Ormond Lakes Homeowner Association, Ms. Brown, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, White, and there was an email chain after uh, the planning board. So all that information is in your packet. The Ormond Grand project is approximately 11.86 acres. This is US Highway 1 right here, and then the entrance to Ormond Lakes would be right here. So it's kind of tucked in. Um, previously, in, in the 2005, it was zoned industrial. So this entire area, which is gray, was industrial reaching back. The applicant at that time did an amendment to allow residential, believing it would be a more appropriate transition from the industrial on US-1 to the Ormond Lake property. So there are three areas. The first area remains industrial, and that would be the access point into the project. The second area is the 8.2 acres for the multifamily townhomes, and the third acre are two wetlands that already have conservation easements and that would be preserved. The project did go to construction after getting a special exception in 2007. Um, they did some infrastructure, some utilities, um, some grading, some site clearing, and they eventually, with the economic downturn, the project stopped, and here we are today in 2020, and they're restarting the project. The first zoning action is rezoning this R5 portion of land to the planned residential development. The purpose of that is really to get to the next item which is the issuance of a development order. So this site plan is in your, your packet. The yellow areas are the buildings. Again, there's 60 multifamily townhomes. The wetlands are shown in this hatched area. Into the project site, this would be a private drive owned and maintained by the Homeowners Association. There's an emergency access easement that provides a second access for emergency personnel that connects with Ormond Lakes. This lot is owned by the applicant. So that would provide a second emergency access for the project. On the east side of the project next to Lachlan Lane, there's a 20 foot natural buffer, there's a stormwater ditch, additional landscaping, and then there's a PVC vinyl fence that runs around the perimeter of the property. There is a pool house and a cabana located here for the uh, 60 units. For this project, a key issue has been the stormwater. And as described in the staff report, there's really three areas of the stormwater. The first is the existing Ormond Lakes Unit 3, Section A. This was a subdivision that was built in, in 1996. This is the as-built drawing. And the stormwater is shown here in blue. So it's a system um, that is an open swale that's designed to go to a pipe system under Indian Boat into a retention pond that is along Ormond Lakes Boulevard and the Florida Power and Light Easement. This system, the, the drainage system, is actually within the lots. So you, your portion of your property has a drainage easement for the subdivision um, stormwater improvements. And the Ormond Grand property would be located here. This would be Lachlan, and the yellow lots are, are cliffside. This stormwater system is owned and maintained by the Ormond Lakes Homeowners Association. So it's a private system. There isn't a city component to the system. As uh, with most subdivisions, it's a privately owned and maintained stormwater system. 
When the project started in 2007, there were concerns regarding stormwater from the wetland, this is Ormond Lakes, the entrance, the wetland here, the wetland that extends behind the properties on Blockhouse, and the properties along Lockland. Basically, the water was staying in there and not moving. In order to resolve that, a drainage swale was uh, proposed. This was after uh, many meetings over a course of approximately a year. Um, so a drainage swale was constructed where you see these blue arrows that goes into the Ormond Lakes three, phase three unit or section A uh, plans. The original design was to put this conveyance sway, swale in Ormond Lakes. At the time, there were no drainage easements and they couldn't get drainage easements from the property owners. So they moved the conveyance swale onto Ormond Grand, leaving that 20 foot buffer for the benefit of both projects. So this drainage swale goes through Ormond Grand, but it conveys the water for Ormond Lakes. This is the as-built um, along with this uh, drainage swale. There was also the regrading of the original uh, stormwater system associated with the Ormond Lakes Unit 3A project. This is the connection that basically moves the water from this drainage system into there, and then it goes again into Indian Bow and into that stormwater pond. The third stormwater item is the actual design for the Ormond Grand project. Through site plan review and through review of the stormwater plan, staff has been able to determine that all the water that you see associated with this project is going into their two stormwater retention ponds. So this project is not draining water into that conveyance ditch or onto Ormond Lakes. So their water is staying within their property and then rehydrating the, the the um, wetlands. The third zoning component is that preliminary plat. This would be the industrial area that would be platted and a public road with a cul-de-sac. This would be a, a public maintenance and responsibility. The industrial parcel doesn't require a plan development. It'll be a site plan review with a masonry wall and appropriate landscaping. The individual units for the multifamily townhomes would be platted. They'd be able to be sold as fee simple lots and this is the overall plot showing both the industrial parcel and the multifamily and then the surrounding Ormond Lakes property. At the planning board, there was uh, conversations and direction to the applicant to go meet with the Ormond Lakes HOA. I know that has happened because I've talked to both representatives of the HOA and to the applicant. I, don't, I believe they looked at different options for the Ormond Lakes Unit 3A uh, stormwater issues but I don't believe there has been a final resolution. Staff is recommending approval of all three items. Each item was recommended for approval by the planning board by a seven to zero vote. If there are any questions, I am available. We also have our civil engineer who reviewed the stormwater available. Thank you, Stephen. Any questions for Stephen? No. Thank you. Thank you. Also, uh, the applicant is available uh, for questions as well. Parker Mischenberg and I do not have any other cards for 8D. Just need a motion and a second. I'll move um, ordinance 2020-53. Uh, second. Any other discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Kent. Yes. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Littleton. Yes. Commissioner Selby. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. 8E. Ordinance number 2020-54, an ordinance approving a planned residential development to be known as Ormond Grand on approximately 8.2 acres, generally located south and east of 1255 North US Highway 1, authorizing the issuance and execution of a development order for 60 multifamily townhouse units and associated site improvements providing conditions and expirations of approval and providing an effective date. This is the first reading of ordinance number 2020-54 read by title only. Thank you, Colby. This is 8E, uh, the development order, and I don't have any additional cards. I'll move uh, ordinance 2020-54. Second. Any discussion or questions on the development order? Please call the vote. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Littleton. Yes. Commissioner Selby. Yes. Commissioner Kent. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. 8F. 
Resolution number 2020-189, a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Ormond Beach, Florida, approving the preliminary plat for the Ormond Grand Subdivision of Land, establishing conditions and expiration date of approval, and setting forth an effective date. This is resolution number 2020-189, read by title only. And again, other than the applicant, I don't have any cards. I move approval of resolution number 2020-189. A second the motion. Any Discussion or questions? Please call the vote. Commissioner Littleton. Yes. Commissioner Selby. Yes. Commissioner Kent. Yes. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. And we will close the public hearings and move to 9A. Ordinance number 2020-55, an ordinance amending section 22-115, fee imposed, schedule of chapter 22, water and sewers. Oh, oh sorry, hold on. Oh, nope, that's right. Of the City of Mormon Beach Code of Ordinances by increasing the water and sewer service impact fees, repealing all inconsistent ordinances or parts thereof, and setting forth an effective date. This is the first reading of Ordinance Number 2020 55, read by title only. Thank you, Colby. Uh, I do not have any cards for 9A. Move approval 9A. Second. Any discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Selby. Yes. Commissioner Kent. Yes. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Littleton. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. And we will now have reports, suggestions, and requests, starting with City Manager Joyce Shanahan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and City Commission. Uh, first of all, um, I wanted to update the Commission on the Police Department's activities during Christmas. Right now, they're operating a Grinch Busters campaign. They're doing extra uh, retail patrols to ensure shopping areas are safe. They're reminding residents that they are our first defense in fighting crime. If you see something, say something. Lock your door, lock your cars, and remove your valuables. And they're also doing extra patrols in neighborhoods to um, prevent uh, attempts by porch pirates and car breaks. So they're really um, going all out this, this year. Um, also, you may have noticed that um, the, our strategic response vehicle was out this weekend with Phil the MRAP for Christmas uh, toys for kids at Walmart. Um, it was a huge success. Uh, they've got several other locations they're going to. Um, this past weekend, they received over 100 toys, including seven bicycles, a lot of monetary uh, donations and gift cards. So we're really pleased about that. Um, I'm also pleased to early announce, Chief, that um, we were notified by the um, uh, Volusia, well, I guess it's the Five County Crime Buster, uh, Crime Stoppers Association that offers Sir Ryan Mihelko uh, was named Officer of the Year for, for the Crime Stoppers. So we're very proud of him and um, they will be at our next meeting to present um, <coughs> Um, Officer Mihelko for um, his work. Uh, he, he worked on two very tough cases. One was the child death um, um, off of the trailer park and the other was a serial rapist that he helped uh, solve that case and uh, it incorporated cases from other counties. So really great job by him. And he will tell you that it's a, a whole department effort um, but we're, we really appreciate all of his work on that. Um, secondly, uh, the Casson Park Floating Dock and Breakwater received the Florida Planning and Zoning Association Award for Outstanding Innovation and Design. Uh, Sean Finley and uh, another engineer, Alex Schumann, will uh, go to accept that award uh, next week and we'll bring that to you at your next meeting. Um, the, Volusia, the, the Economic Development News, Volusia County Business Grant Program, Ormond Beach Stats. Um, in Ormond Beach, we um, helped our businesses secure 524 grants issuing, um, resulted in $1.5 million. So they applied to the County for a CARES Act grant. Uh, you could have a bricks and mortar building, a bricks and mortar business or a home-based business. And so um, we were the second most distributed uh, amount of dollars um, 
outside of Daytona Beach. Daytona Beach had um, $1.6 million and we had $4.7 million. So um, really kudos to Brian and thanks to Stephen. They had sort of a war room of sorts. They, when the applications hit the website, they were receiving them as they were being processed. Uh, Becky Wido in planning helped review to make sure they had their business license permit. Uh, Loretta Mozio was helping, helping, our grants manager was helping track down those that maybe didn't have all their information. And so they really worked hard and they processed those quickly. So far, the county program has distributed eight point, almost $8.9 million to small businesses in Volusia County for CARES Act funding. Um, let's see. anything else of major importance. Um, Mary and Bright on Main Street, uh, we're kicking that off. Tonight you uh, did a virtual Christmas tree lighting. Um, uh, kudos to the leisure services staff with that giant big switch. Uh, uh, it makes me think of um, that Chevy Chase movie with all the <laughs> Christmas decorations. Businesses are, for Mary and Bright on Main Street, businesses are being encouraged to decorate in accordance with the theme and we are offering and offer various discounts and specials in an attempt to increase business in the downtown and help the businesses recover some of their losses. The Home for the Holiday Parade judges will award cash prizes. First place would be $2,000, second place $1,000, Third place, seven fifty, and honorable mention, five hundred dollars. The committee will present the winning businesses with signage to display in their windows, and will promote this event on social media. So we're hoping to have good participation. Those are great prizes for businesses that are in need uh, this year, and maybe helps reward their employees who've worked so hard to help them get through the um, COVID. Staff and staff will have the city commission their families and Santa do a. Uh, drive through Santa parade um, coming soon. We won't share all the details because we don't want to have a lot of people out. It's just a drive through. We're going to have Santa waving and, and welcoming the new holiday season. Uh, let's see what else. And just an update, you have a, you have a second meeting this uh, month. You have it on December 15th. And then your first meeting of the new year is January 5th. And then um, on Tuesday, January 19th, we'll have Sh Dr. Sean Snaith with uh, UCF do a uh, presentation workshop on financial forecasting for um, and what the economic outlook looks for this specific area. He's really not dry. He's kind of entertaining. So it'll, it'll be um, interesting to say the least. And then you have your regular commission meeting workshop. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, if not, good night. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Joyce. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Persis. Yeah. I'm, so the drive through Santa Parade, we don't have a date. There's no parade. There's no parade. Right, but it's we don't know a, when we're doing it. I can tell you uh, privately. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. I was just wondering. Okay. I don't want people to think we're having a parade. We're just right. going to have I, I a understand. caravan. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you for that report, Joyce. A lot. A lot going on. Uh, Assistant City Manager Claire Whitley. Uh, no additional comments. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. City Attorney Randy Hayes. Nothing this evening. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Randy. And tonight we start with Deputy Mayor Persis. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, first of all, I, I want to also compliment uh, Stephen and staff, anyone involved with that great light switch out there, because I actually tried to turn it on and off myself, because I really thought it was real. It looked great. It was just a perfect uh, addition to the lighting the Christmas tree virtually. It was amazing. I just loved it. Um, I just want to, first of all, I want to compliment Mayor Partington for his letter to the editor last week. I don't know if everybody read it, but basically it was looking for uh, funding for the purchase of the lots at Plantation Oaks. And I really agree with his letter, and I want to always to preserve more land and save as much of our beautiful Ormond Beach environment as possible by using forever funds and state grant partnerships. And additionally, I would like for the city to expand the trail system in Ormond Beach by using ECHO funds and partnering with the county to increase outdoor recreation. The voters recently voted to approve forever and ECHO funds for the next 20 years by a supermajority. So hopefully, I hope all of you all agree with this. And um, 
there's a lot to look forward to and a lot of a lot of good possibilities out there. And since um, I think that's really all I have, I'm just looking forward to the next few weeks. It's exciting that the weather is uh, nice and cold right now and uh, kind of makes you feel like Christmas is coming. So thank you and good evening. That's right. Commissioner Littleton, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I have nothing further to add. Thank you, sir. And Commissioner Selby. Thank you, Mayor. A um, couple of quick things. Um, first, um, I, I had an opportunity regarding Riverbend Golf Course. I had the opportunity to play in the PAL uh, golf tournament a couple of weeks ago at Riverbend, and, and that was the first time I had played there in a few months. And, and um, uh, you know, I was disappointed in the condition of the golf course, and, and uh, not just the course, but uh, also the buildings and the bridges and the catwalks and the driving range and so forth. So I'm not surprised that the, and I'd heard some rumors that the, uh, you know, the financial condition of the operator was, uh, of our tenant was uh, in trouble. And I, I for one, would, um, would probably not support the city taking that golf course over. Um, I think golf courses are extremely difficult to operate profitably, especially just 18 holes. And, um, in this market, in our local market. So I just kind of wanted to get that out there. The second thing is um, I ran into um, State Representative Tom Leake the other night. And, um, uh, you know, we are in the midst of, of, we meaning the greater Volusia County area, in the midst of a really exciting time on the state level. We have a lot of, between Paul Renner and Tom Leake and, and even Senator Wright, um, we have some very uh, powerful, influential um, uh, state representatives and senators. And um, he specifically asked me if we had some funding requests. And he's very involved in the budget process. And we really, um, the, the, the underlying message to me was, you know, look, guys, we, and, and I know there's going to be a lot of pressure because of COVID, you know, to that they're going to say that there's not a lot of extra money. But the, with the leadership people that we have in place, I think for legitimate projects, we can get funding. So we really need to, and we got to do it quickly because I think he said committees start meeting the end of this month, I think, or, or in, certainly by early January. So I just put that out there that we should all be thinking about things that we would. And, and you know, if we don't get funded this year, it's always good to get it in the hat, get them thinking about it, talking about it, and then maybe it happens uh, next year or the year after. And then the third thing is relative to uh, the loop. I, too, uh, very much enjoyed your uh, op-ed, Mayor. I thought it was extremely well written. Um, I thought the the references uh, to the movie were great, and also to the um, the the, uh, the I forget the name of the organization. The Loop, uh, is it Save the Loop? Scenic Loop and Trail. Yeah, so yeah, Scenic Loop and Trail. Uh, the hard work that they've been doing um, for many years in um, in preserving the Loop was uh, was really important. And I just want to say that that the the idea that's being floated out there is interesting, but but frankly, I, I don't get. It doesn't make sense to me to buy land that is 175 feet off the road. I mean, we already there's a 175 foot buffer in Plantation Oaks, so to go west of that 175 feet when the buffer for for um, Halifax Plantation is 50 feet. So they have a 50-foot buffer up there. So the, Halif the Plantation Oaks buffer is 175 feet, nearly four times as deep. doesn't make sense to me to spend hard-earned taxpayer dollars to buy land that's further away from the road than that when there are, there are actually four other parcels um, that are in private ownership on the west side of Dixie Highway, of course, everything on the east side of Dixie Highway is already in public ownership. And that was as a result of the owners of that land, the National Gardens Trust, when they donated all that, a couple of thousand acres to the, uh, to the state. 
So I think we should focus in on the other vacant parcels that front on Dixie Highway. And by the way, none of those are in Ormond Beach. They're all in the county. Um, but I, and they're north of Plantation Oaks. Um, and they go up to, basically from Plantation Oaks, up to uh, the um, James Orman Park. So all of that land between the northern limit of Plantation Oaks uh, up to the James Orman Park is four parcels that are privately owned. I've been in contact actually with both of the owners of those properties and have had some preliminary conversations, you know, just about various things. So um, hopefully, I mean, that's where I think we should focus our energies, and I hope, you know, I, I would hope that people would agree that um, just because it's vacant now doesn't mean it's going to stay vacant forever, and especially if it's in private ownership, you know, people own that land with the intent of building something on it someday. So um, that's that's kind of the direction that, that, I, that I'm working, and I would hope that we would all agree to, you know, work towards. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Commissioner. And Commissioner Kent. Thank you. I'm so glad that Ed Kelly, Chairman Kelly, was here tonight and we were able to honor him. My favorite thing that Chairman Kelly has done as the chairman of Volusia County Council is he got beach ramps opened in Ormond Beach. Ormond Beach residents were able to access our beaches under his leadership, and I will never forget that. I will also not forget um, the chairman calling me on two or three occasions when there were issues that were before the, co the council. And he just wanted to run them by a guy that he said loves that beach. And I appreciated that he took the time to do that. That's the type of leader he is. And if he was calling me about beach issues, then he was calling many other people about every other issue because he wanted the best information he could get. And what a fantastic mayor he was for Ormond Beach. Shop Small Saturday, Ike Leary, thank you for coming tonight and bragging about Ormond Main Street and what a great event that was for not only your business, but many businesses in Ormond Beach and for our residents to get out. Um, I, I just, uh, it, it warms your heart to hear great things like that in our community, so thank you. And, and my last comment tonight is uh, from Ms. Shanahan Joyce. Thank you for making sure that Ike Leary has a seat at the table from the, from the beginning with the planning process of the new bait shop that we're going to have. Um, it's an important step and an important piece. And, you know, he, he looks at it from a different um, set of glasses. You know, I know that I mentioned a couple months ago, you know, I didn't think about it, but you got to make, you have to make sure that the, um, the, the live bait wells are installed before you put the walls up because you can't get them in otherwise. And I wouldn't have thought of that, but Ike Leary knows that. Uh, so I appreciate you making sure that, you know, the proper stakeholders are, are involved. Again, kudos to your leadership uh, with the city. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you, Commissioner. And <clears throat> Ike, I pointed out that you're one of our ambassadors. Uh, there aren't a lot of those, and so we appreciate all you do for the city, uh, including not only recognizing the Small Business Saturday folks, but the way you participate with leisure services on, for the fishing tournaments, providing hot dogs and, and uh, fishing gear for the, for the children. It's an uh, awesome thing, and we appreciate you. So I just want to make sure you, you know that and recognize you for that. Um, <clears throat> Chairman Kelly, it was awesome, too, to have him here tonight. He, as Volusia County Chairman, reached out to all the mayors on a regular basis and communicated. I mean, the lines of the communication with Volusia County had never been better, and uh, a lot of mayors commented how unusual it was, but yet how great it was that we were actually included in conversations and information, and he listened to our concerns <clears throat> and took them back and did what he could with them. So uh, truly an honor to, not only for all he did for Ormond Beach, to honor him for what he's done for, for Volusia County and those relationships as well. Um, really excited about Detective Mahalko. 
that's the big award is my understanding for Volusia County, which we are always hoping to get when we when we go to that award ceremony, which was canceled, I guess, this year due to COVID, but uh, just wonderful that he's being recognized. And, and I know, you know, different agencies have different situations year to year, so you're always going to have different winners, but it's just really awesome to see Ormond Beach being recognized and his hard work on those difficult cases. And uh, it is awesome. It just shows the kind of person he is that he gives the rest of the department credit as well. That's to, that's to his credit. And so looking forward to recognizing him next, next meeting. Um, <clears throat> also excited about the Casson Park breakwater. That was a fantastic project and obviously it's been recognized for as such throughout the state. I think other cities are gonna look at that and probably replicate it up and down the coast. And so uh, wonderful that you guys did so much hard work on that, that it's working so well and now you're gonna be recognized. That Ormond Beach is gonna be recognized as well, but thank you. Thank you for that. Also, our uh, economic development director, uh, grants director, and the rest of staff that worked so hard on the business grants for Ormond Beach with a population of our size were maybe two thirds the size of Daytona or maybe half, depending on uh, what the new numbers show. But to be number two in the county uh, in the amount of business grants that we received it's because our staff worked so hard, so diligently to help our businesses. And uh, some businesses are still struggling, but many businesses were very much helped by that COVID uh, business grant relief from the county. So kudos to y'all for that. And uh, thank you for your hard work on that. I don't know if anybody noticed, uh, I got a tweet during the meeting from Obi and Obi, I didn't realize even that he was here. When, when we flicked the light switch and turned the tree on earlier, I did notice Obi in the tree. And so he's followed, he's followed us into the commission chambers and brought some candy canes tonight. And he is the uh, official uh, Ormond Beach. Uh, he's been assigned to Ormond Beach and he brought some cold weather with him down from the North Pole and uh, just wanted to point that out if anybody wants a candy cane on the way out. But uh, I thought that was great and just another way to, to get into the holiday spirit. So uh, thank you for that tweet, Obi, and uh, we look forward to seeing more of you over the next few weeks. And with that, uh, we are adjourned. Thank you all. <laughs>